Well, hello all. Thanks for taking a minute to uh, watch this video. Um, I'm here with uh, Kern Leitner from our Leadership Council and Kathy Charette, uh, who's uh, been doing a lot of work helping us get ready, uh, not only to move, but has shifted her efforts to, to how to keep us all safe uh, during this uh, coronavirus time. We, we have our masks and we're trying to social distance as we're here today for these couple of minutes. I'm going to share with you from these experts here who have been working really hard and trying to trying to keep us not only safe as a community, but safe as a community of faith. And we put together some procedures and, and some plans that we just want to share with you because we're all wondering, when can we get back together? And when we do, what that's going to look like. Kerm, I'll just first uh, turn to you. I understand there's a special task force that's been tasked with putting together some uh, some procedures as we move through these different phases of uh, red, yellow, and, and eventually green. Can you fill us in on some of that? Yes, I will. Uh, first of all, by policy, um, when we need to shut down the church, and it doesn't happen very often at all, but it's usually been weather-related, we have a policy that the lead pastor uh, confers with the leadership council chair, and that's how we make those decisions. When we were shut down by the decrees of the governor and the, the president limiting the size of gatherings, uh, leadership council uh, voted to shut down all activities, we had no mechanism really to, to reopen. Uh, one of the basic tenets of the leadership council over the years, and my good friend Kathy is the one that, that gave us these three responsibilities of, of the leadership council and the church, that we are to love our pastors, we're to pray for our pastors, and we are to support our pastors. And as the chair of leadership council, I didn't want the decision making on how we reopen just to fall on Jim and, and Mira's shoulders. So on May 8th, I met with Pastor Jim, and I suggested that we use what was already in place, and that was the visioning steering committee, and that was comprised of of Bill Bunt and Kathy Charette and Pastor Jim and Pastor Mirror and myself, and that we would we would form what I call the reopening team. Um, that very day, I, I drove away from the church and I drove by the parsonage, and I knew Ron Cipriano was doing a number of things to get the parsonage ready for uh, Pastor Jake and his family. And I thought, let me add him, because his area is facilities, and a lot of what we were doing would be related to that. Um, so that, that was the, 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 the reasoning that we formed a, a, a reopening team. And then at our very first meeting, uh, and when this video goes out, we will have had three meetings, we identified a number of things that needed to be done. Guidelines for the staff, guidelines for people coming into the church, uh, requirements of anyone using any one of our rooms, uh, a timeline to, to reopen the building, um, and, and also, and um, I'm really going to depend on, on Kathy here, uh, the whole idea of how we can sanitize, how we can make this building clean and, and, and right up to snuff so that when we reopen, um, it'll, be, it'll be the best uh, hygienically for all of those uh, entering the building. One of the things that we talked about doing, and I want to thank the congregation because uh, we're taping here on, on Tuesday, and already 200 people have responded to the survey which was sent out this past Friday. And we wanted to use a survey just to get an idea. There's six on this reopening uh, team, but we wanted everyone to have input into, into helping us make decisions how we can uh, safely reopen the building. So I want to thank the people who have responded. If you haven't responded yet, please do so, because that data will be uh, very useful as, as we plan ahead. One of, the, well, actually the largest United Methodist uh, churches in the country um, survey their congregation, uh, and that's the uh, Church of the Resurrection in Kansas City. And 42% of, of the people that responded to their survey said they would 
wait a long time, maybe as long as getting a vaccine until they return to church. So we want to find out from you how you feel about uh, coming back for uh, small groups, coming back for meetings, uh, and then coming back for worship services. So that's the reason, Pastor Jim, that we formed this uh, reopening team. Thank you very much, Karen, for filling us in. Uh, we're so lucky and blessed to have people like this who are who have delved into that. They're like everyone else, very busy with things in their lives. We really appreciate what the, so many people here at CUMC are doing to help us minister to you, to the community, and to share the gospel of Jesus, even in these times. Now, Kathy, you dealt with some more specifics kinds of things in, in putting together an opportunity for us, how we're going to come back and what that's going to look like so that we can do it safely. I think we talked, the last thing we want is anyone to get sick, you know, for anything that happens here. So we're proceeding with a lot of caution, but caution on purpose. We do believe that God's family is a complete family, and and that includes all the age groups and 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 all of, the, all of the suggested and recommendations, we want to follow as much as we can. Can, can you elaborate a little more? Sure, what we're using is, we use the uh, CDC and Department of Health guidelines, and uh, if you've been paying attention, they change quite frequently. So we've been following those. We uh, wrote our cleaning and disinfecting guidelines based on those. Um, they have it, all businesses are using that, so we're no different than any other business. We focused first on little lights because they were coming back and we needed people, parents needed to go back to work. So we got that in place in support of them, you know, cleaning frequently throughout the day, sanitizing and disinfecting completely at night. We next focused on the staff. How could we get the staff back to work the same way that those parents were going back to work, we're going back to work. Uh, so we focused on what we need to do in the church to keep the staff safe. And um, we added in, we, we actually have a pandemic policy now, which Kerm had the committee, committee uh, write. So we're trying to be as safe as we can for everybody. Um, you know, we have a lot of people that could come in here that are high risk. We don't even know if we're high risk or not, but uh, we wanna be as safe as possible. So anybody that comes in here, uh, you're wearing a mask, you're uh, washing your hands frequently, and we're social distancing as we are today. I know during this yellow phase that we're currently in, uh, the building is technically open. It opened with little lights first, and we're quite frankly watching little lights and learning from them about uh, some of the guidelines that we put in place to see what works. We're probably gonna have to tweak a few of those, but it's also open to you. No groups are allowed larger than 25, and, during the daytime, it's not open to groups. It's just for little lights. But in the evening time, it is available. All of the reservations need to go through Audra Clements. Uh, she's our administrative assistant. And if you want to come to the building, which you're welcome to do for any kind of business that you'd like to conduct here, the only uh, door right now open during the daytime is the office door. And just know that you'll just need to call the office number. It's posted on the door and uh, someone would come to the door and escort you in and, and you see the requirements on the door, the, the typical things of, of masking and social distancing right now. So uh, all of that information is going to be shared with you. You'll be able to see that. I just want to thank you for taking a couple minutes to watch this video. I'll ask the two of you, Kerm or or Kathy, do you have anything, last words you'd like to share? I, I do want to share one thing. I, I participated in a webinar on Saturday, May the 2nd, and the presenter said something which I really embraced, and as the, as the chair of this reopening team, uh, it's, it's kind of been a, a, um, kind of our marching orders. We are going in a very gradual fashion. The presenter on the webinar said, crawl, walk, and then run. And that's been the kind of the guiding principle that we've been following. As Pastor Jim said, we started with uh, Little Lights, uh, the office, the way we've opened that initially with uh, limited hours, 
um, for two weeks, and then the third week we'll expand to, to uh, regular office hours, nine to, nine to four. When we, the Leadership Council, on, on the 16th of March, closed down everything, it's like we just turned off the switch. Uh, you don't just turn it on now. What we have to do is like use the dimmer switch and just ever so slightly turn more and more on. And we just ask that you be patient, that you continue to pray for, for our pastors and our leadership team. Uh, we always feel the, 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 uh, the support that those prayers bring. Um, none of us took a course in how to reopen a church in the middle of a, a, a pandemic. We're doing our best. As Kathy said, the guidelines change all the time, um, but we just ask your patience. And, and the very fact that over 50% of our congregation are, are 65 or older, that's a significant number. And, and the CDC says that that age category of which I am a member, a proud member at the age of 73, um, we're at risk. And we don't want to put anybody at more at risk by just quickly um, just throwing open the doors. So we're going to go slowly. We ask your uh, patience and indulgence as we do so. And we're doing it so that every single person um, can be um, as safe as possible uh, when at CUMC for any activity that we plan. And I would just add during this time, you know, we can feel a little disconnected from the church, but I would ask you pick up the phone, call a friend. We, we the people, are their church, so um, you can make the difference in somebody's day. I know that I'm calling people that um, I normally would see on Sundays and I don't get to see them now. So don't be afraid to pick up the phone and be connected with your friends during this time. Well, thanks to the two of you. I'm sure if you have any questions, you can contact any of the three of us at any time. Email, telephone, leave a message here at the church. Uh, we're in the directory if you want to call uh, our home numbers. That would be just fine. We, we want everybody to feel secure and safe through this, and we'll answer any questions you have. And likewise, I'd just like to share the slogan we have here at CUMC during these days. It's faith over fear and prayer over panic. Thanks a lot for watching.